have Michael Young in the game between the Bayside Razorbacks and the Pine River Pirates. Thanks, Andrew. Now, game with a difference in the seniors. For the first time, we're seeing two teams that are winless. Um, in saying that, though, um, both teams really should be should be pretty, pretty evenly matched. I mean, really an unknown quantity. The teams that they've played um, so far have been able to dispatch them pretty easily. Both teams, though, do have uh, American talent. Uh, so, I mean, they should be able to play football. Both teams are also up to strength. Uh, Pine Rivers Pirates in the past played with a small squad. Today, they have a full strength squad. I think um, on the whole, though, I mean, the Razorbacks generally have more experience. They've been in the league longer. They've got a lot of their players back. And I think um, the Razorbacks are really the team that, that are going to do it. I think they're going to have a little bit too much for the Pine Rivers Pirates. All right, I'm here with uh, Jesse Ornelas, who's uh, the coach of the Pine River Pirates. Jesse, a little bit of preamble here. Um, second time to Australia. Um, you're from LA, I understand. You were out here a little bit uh, for a little bit of time last year. Now you're back. You must like the place. Yeah, it's really nice out here. I like it. People are great. Uh, it's good football, and it's coming up. It's starting to get better out here. Uh, I'm looking forward to helping any program out here. Uh, a lot of the programs. Uh, I was out here to coach clinics along with uh, coaching our team, and. Uh, Unfortunately, we haven't had the numbers on our team this year, but hopefully we'll get more interest and people will start coming out. Okay, now you're up against uh, the Razorbacks today. Both teams are without a win, um, so this is obviously a, a crucial match for both of you. Are you taking any particular tactics into, into today's game? No, actually, uh, I'm not going to change anything up in our offense or defense because we, we've been playing well. It's just unfortunate that we've, had, uh, we've, had, we've been put in situations where we've, we've had only about 12... 13 players and we've had some injuries and players just get tired and we played really well in the first half uh, we, we just start dying off towards the end of the game and that's where teams are starting to beat us and have been beating us and we got enough players today so I don't think I really need to change a whole lot today. All right Jesse thanks very much for your time and good luck. Right, thanks. thanks a lot. Talking to Glenn Parker head coach of the Bayside Razorbacks. Glenn you're coming off a big win uh, with the Jets, the juniors, um, did very, very well against Toowoomba. Are you looking for a similar result in the senior game? Well, we're happy for uh, that's a similar thing. That's right, Mike, because, uh, you know, as you know, we're, we're on the bottom of the table with the Pirates, and we haven't really done very well this year, but still, uh, we've had a marked improvement over the last three weeks. Uh, we've had a gentleman come over, Mr. Brendan Wiley, and he's helped me out in the coaching, and he, he's sort of like taking over the reins uh, with the boys during the week, and uh, he's doing a great job. We're much more uh, together now, and I hope, yeah, we're hoping for a win at least for today, yeah, for sure. Uh, Brendan has experience uh, on both sides of the camera, as you know, he's been one of our on-field reporters. Um, he does bring with him a wealth of experience. Um, he's represented, represented the state on, on a number of occasions. Apart from his coaching role, I mean, are you looking for a lot of input from him um, on, the, on the field, um, both in a playing and in terms of a leadership role? Initially, no, we weren't. But, uh, you know, Brendan, he, he's hard to keep off a football park. And, and now he's, he's playing uh, quite a bit of uh, linebacker and he's also playing tight end uh, a bit for us now. And having Brennan on the field, although he's, he's probably his wife doesn't agree with, he, agree with me, but having on the field is absolutely a bonus for us. He's a great player. All right, best of luck, Len. Thanks very much. Thank you very much. Uh, Barry James, offensive guard. Robert Tor, centre. Andrew Tor, offensive guard. Michael Anderson, wide receiver. John Summers, offensive tackle. Mark Sidow, running back. David Gordon, tight end. Jody Wall, left tackle. Mark Daly, wide receiver. Rod Moore, running back. Michael McCarthy, defensive end. Ian Westaway, defensive end. Aaron Joint, defensive tackle. Reuben Allen, defensive tackle. Lauren Thurger, outside linebacker. Brendan Wiley, middle linebacker. Brett Hulse, cornerback. All right, we're ready for the senior game here at Valleys Rugby League, the Briz 31 senior game of the week between the Bayside Razorbacks and the Pine River Pirates. The first time we've seen the Pirates here on Sunday's game. So let's go down for the kick.
and the Razorbacks to kick off. Number 94 for the Razorbacks, out of bounds. Right from the kickoff by the Razorbacks, ball untouched, and the Pirates elected to take the ball where it went out. So they'll be first and ten on their own 43. The quarterback, Jesse Onalis, number four, handoff to the running back, Mark Salauer, number 22, little gain on the play, and they'll be second and ten. Second and ten for the Pirates, I formation. Again, handing off to the running back, 22, Mark Salauer, good run up the middle. Stopped by number 24 for the Razorbacks, Brendan Wiley, and number 92, Jeremy Bates, always strong in defence. That'll bring up third down, that third and five. Third and five for the Pirates in eye formation again. Fake to the running back and keep by the quarterback. He's a, made a great yards there. And that'll bring up first down for the Pirates into Razorbacks area. Great run there from the quarterback for the Pirates, Jesse Onalis. It'll bring up first and ten in the Razorbacks zone. Hand off to the running back, Mark Salawa. Big run up the middle, cut around, wandering through this de feeble defence from the Razorbacks, and that's a first down on the 20-yard line of the Razorbacks. Big drive from the Pirates. First and ten for the Pirates. Hand off to the running back, number 80, James Fassie, stopped by the Razorbacks. Number 50 there. Second down for the Pirates. Flags down. Hand off to the running back. Couple of flags on the play. So we had two penalties there. Both live ball. An illegal procedure from the Pirates. And a face mask by the Razorbacks. They will offset. And the down is replayed at second and five for the Pirates. On a good drive. Two flags down, pitch out to number 44, Rodney Moore, turns the corner, and let's see the result of that play. That was a five-yard penalty there to the Pirates, an illegal procedure, costly one after a good game. Analis at quarterback. Pitch back to number 44, Rodney Moore, looking up the middle, but stopped. 92 for the Razorback, Jeremy Bates. Third and six for the Pirates on a good drive. And Nalas again mustering his wide receiver, number 13, Mark Daly. Out to the right receiver and penalty on the play, caught by Scott Grease, number 55. The face mask incurred by the Razorbacks, a half distance to the goal penalty, and that'll bring up first and goal with three yards out for the Pirates. Split backs, Analis at quarterback. Off to his running back. 22 marks Silau, but stopped by the Razorbacks. That'll be short. Second down and goal for the Pirates. Stopped by 92, Jeremy Bates. Big hit. Anala's pitching out here, looking for his receiver, number seven. He's going to keep the ball, and he is in for a touchdown. Two-point conversion was successful with Anala's running it in. Great play. An unsportsmanlike penalty after the end of that play by the Razorbacks. That brings the kickoff for the Pirates up on their 50. Number 50, Barry James, to kick off deep. Picked up by number three, number two, Jason Bates. And forced out of bounds by number 35, Michael Anderson. First and 10 for the Razorbacks on their own 25. Split backs. Number 13, Craig falls in quarterback. R run by the running back. Forced out of bounds, number 81 by the Pirates. Paul Dalton, but good pickup for the Razorbacks. Craig falls at quarterback with a big pick up, second and three for the Razorbacks. Out to the running back. Razorbacks driven back in that play, and that's third and four. Eye back formation with their running backs. Uh, kept by the quarterback, 
out to number 35, their wide receiver. Number 85 in Westaway with the carry there for the, as the receiver, picking up the first down, first and 10 for the Razorbacks on their own 30. Hand off to the running back, number 31, Jimmy McCullum. But small gain on the play. Second and 10 for the Razorbacks, eye back formation. Kept by the quarterback, flag down, big run up the sideline. Let's see if we can get the block going, yes. 85 Westaway completed the block and he is going all the way for the touchdown. But let's see the result of those flags. Penalty was for offside against the defense, the Pirates. That was, of course, the climb by the Razorbacks to accept the six-point touchdown. And now they'll attempt to run it in for two points. Falls the quarterback, 88 in motion. Pass to 24 on the fingertips. Couldn't be completed by Brendan Wiley. Unsuccessful attempt. And that will leave the score. The Pine River Pirates, eight against the Bayside Razorbacks, six. The Razorbacks to kick off. Number 22, Trevor Dart. Long kick down to number 80, James Fassie. Good run back. Eventually got up to his own 45 and bring up first and 10 for the Pine River Pirates. First and 10 for the Pirates in the first quarter. Keep by Onalis, the quarterback. He's going to look long. No, scrambling in defence, being pressured by 85 in Westaway. Eventually tries to get away for one of his receivers, but unsuccessful. Incomplete pass. Second and ten now for the Pirates after that incomplete pass. Handoff to the running back by Anales and gain of four. Third and six for the Pirates. High back formation. Pitch out to 44. Rodney Moore and stopped by 24. Brendan Wiley and 92 Jeremy Bates. But I think he's brought up the first down for the Pirates. Short there for the Pirates, bringing up fourth and inches, and they're going for it. Split backs. Off to the running back. Good defense. This will be close. So after that rod by Ron Rodney Moore for the Pirates, he was short. Stopped by the defense of the Razorbacks, bringing up first and ten for the Razorbacks after a change of possession. Falls in quarterback, handing off to number 31, Brian Clark, and pushed back. Loss of yardage there for the Razorbacks. Second 11 for the Razorbacks. Flags down, falls rolling out, looking to turn the corner and forced out of bounds by the Pirates. The Pine River Pirates in the neutral zone at the last snap, bringing up a five yard penalty for the Razorbacks there. Second and seven. Quarterback falls rolling out to Brendan Wiley, caught in bounds. And he'll be short of the first down. That'll bring up third and inches. Brendan Wiley, the receiver, getting enough there for the first down for the Razorbacks. Passed by the quarterback and intercepted by the Pirates. Number four, Jesse Onales, backing up in defense. And that'll bring up first and ten of the Pirates. Great play. A great play by Jesse Onales. Brings up first and ten for the Pirates. Pitch out to number 44, Rodney Moore. Makes a few yards, stopped by 96 for the Razorbacks, Brian McInerney. Second and six for the Pirates. Anales to Silau, big run up the middle. He's palming them off. And stopped by 96, Brian McInerney. Again, 92 as always, Jeremy Bates in defense, but a great run by the Pirates. About 30 yards, and that'll bring up first and 10 to the Pirates in the Razorbacks 30. Pirates first and 10. Pitch out to 44, Rodney Moore. Forced out of bounds by number 50 by the Razorbacks, Lonnie Trigger. The running back Moore injured on the play there. Anales back to the Pirates, connects with number 13, Mark Daly, but couldn't, couldn't catch the ball. And that's incomplete, bringing up third and three for the Pirates. Third and three for the Pirates. High formation. Anales keeping the ball, cutting through. It looks like he's picked up the first down. Tackled by a sea of green, in particular number 50, Lawn Trigger. And that's first down for the Pirates. So at the end of the first quarter, the Pine River Pirates eight, le leading the Bay 
inside Razorback 6. Pirates first and 10 within their own 20, handed off to number 27. Sorry, number 22, Mark Sillow, another successful carry, forced out of bounds, number 92, Jeremy Bates. Second and five for the Pirates, and Alice with eye formation backs. Quarterback keep, looking for his receiver, wide open, number seven, David Gorton, and he has a successful catch for a touchdown for the Pine River Pirates. So the Pirates on the point after try will try and run it in, not electing to kick. And Nullis at quarterback with eye formation backs. Hands off. Uh, reverse to number 35. Michael Anderson turns the corner and he's through for a touchdown. So a successful conversion, two points. And that will lead the score. The Pine River Pirates 16 against the Bayside Razorbacks 6. Pine River Pirates to kick off number 50, Barry James. Back for the Razorbacks, number three, Jimmy McCollum. And number 31, Brian Clark. Flat kickoff, tipped by number 88. Pick up by Brian Clark. Run of about 10 yards, stopped by the Pirates. Number nine, Maka Moengar. Razorbacks first and 10 on their own 43. Falls in at quarterback with split back. Quarterback keep passing. No, no receiver there. Second and ten for the Razorbacks. Lone running back in number 31, Brian Clark for the Razorbacks. Falls in at quarterback. Hands off to Clark. Stopped by the Pirates on the line of scrimmage and little pick up there. Third and ten for the Razorbacks. Falls keeping the ball, looking to roll out. Blocked by Wiley, managed to get Falls some more distance and picks up the first down for the Razorbacks. So first down for the Razorbacks after their run by their quarterback, Craig Falls, looking for the receiver, number seven, Paul Knight. Second and fourth by the Razorbacks after the successful completion. Backward pass to Wiley, sorry, to Brian Clark. That's a live ball picked up by the Pirates. And we've got flags down. Backward pass by the Razorbacks. Very costly. Picked up by the Pirates. We had a legal use of the hands blocked to the back by the Pirates. Bringing him back 10 yards, but they still get first and 10 with the ball. And a small gain on the play by their running back after the handoff by Annalis. Humble on the play there by the Pirates. Very costly, just as they had the ball. Now turned over to the Razorbacks, first and 10 on the Pirates, 45. Falls in at quarterback with the lone running back. Hands off to Clark, number 31, and makes four yards on the play. Second and five for the Razorbacks. Falls back, looking to pass to his quarterback. Intercepted by the Pirates, Annalis, and he could be away. Down the sideline, tackled by Clark, out of bounds. Big pickup by the Pirates. And that'll be first and 10 with only 15 yards to go. First and 10 for the Pirates after a big play by the quarterback, Jesse Annalis. Handoff to number 22, Mark Silau. And stopped by the Pirates with a late flag in there. So the penalty was for holding by the Pirates, but that was declined by the Razorbacks. Bring up second and nine. Pitch out to the running back, Mark Silau. Front blocking by number 80, James for C. Stopped by 24, Brendan Wiley by the Razorbacks. So after that pick up by the running back for the Pirates, that leaves them third and two. Hand out again, reverse to number 35. Michael Anderson, flag on the play. Costly penalty there, bringing him back 10 yards. Kept by Annalis, the quarterback, looking for his receivers. And let's wait, still looking. Looking to move up the field, keeps the ball. And that'll bring up fourth down, fourth and, fourth and long for the Pirates. That was a costly, costly uh, for the Pirates there with the Annalis on the uh, keep. Injured, now going for the field goal. Number 50, Barry James kicking, but unsuccessful. And that'll leave the score, the Pine River Pirates 16, 
the Razorback six. First and ten now for the Razorbacks after that unsuccessful field goal. Hand off to Brian Clark and hammered number one, Mapu Tapaletti. Great play by the Pirates. The Razorbacks had an illegal formation, brought them back five yards and still first and 15. Hand off by the quarterback. Tackled by number one, Mapu Tapaletti again. Strong game in defense. Falls in quarterback with the eye formation. Roll out. Looking down the sideline, blocked by number 24, Brendan Wiley, forced out of bounds pick up of three yards tackled by Craig Freeman number 36 of the Pirates third and one for the Razorbacks back to 31 Clark again looks like he's picked up the first down first and ten for the Razorbacks after the pickup by Clark split backs into Clark again and driven back by number one Mapu Tapaletti having a boomer of a game so holding by the Pirates, very costly, bringing up first and ten from their own 40 for the Razorbacks. Hand off to Clark by Falls. And stopped at the line of scrimmage by Dallas to Goya, number 54. See, first and one, and it was stopped short. We're now second and in inches with the Razorbacks driving out of their own end zone. Hand off to, uh, fake to 22, kept by the quarterback. Up the middle, tackled by number 35, Michael Anderson, but not before he could gain the first down. First and 10 for the Razorbacks, now into the field of play of the Pirates on their own 47. High formation with Bates in the backfield, and we have false start. So after the false start, five yard penalty against the Razorbacks, they're first and 15. Falls rolls out, pursued by number 70, Gary Tyler. An incomplete pass, bringing up second and 15. Broken up. Split backs now for the Razorbacks on first and 15. Falls handoff to Trevor Dart, number 22. Spins out of the tackle by the Pirates. Third and 12 for the Razorbacks, split backs with falls in quarterback. Keeps the ball, rolls out, avoids the tackle. Pummel by the Pirates, no gain on the play. Number 82, Byron Sked for the Pirates. The two on the play for the Razorbacks with two minutes to go in the second quarter. Kicked back by number seven, Paul Knight. Big kick by the Razorbacks, bounces into the end zone that'll be a touchback and the ball will be back on the 20 yard line with the Pirates in possession first and 10 for the Pirates on their 38 and now it's back in at quarterback out to Mark Silau the running back strong defense by 24 Brendan Wiley little gain on the play second and 11 for the Pirates and now it's looking for his receiver number 39, sorry, 35, Mark Anderson. And we have a flag on the play. So the flag was waved away, bringing up third and nine for the Pirates. And Nalas back looking for his receiver. Michael Anderson, but wide and incomplete, bringing up fourth down. So Nalas now back kicking to get the Pirates out from their own 20. Over his head, this could be dangerous. Oh! We'll wait for the referee's decision. Times it out. It is a safety. Two points to the Razorbacks. And that will leave the score. The Pine River Pirates 16, the Razorbacks 8. Now kick off from their own 20. Kick by Barry James. Fielded by Craig Falls from the Razorbacks, changes possession, evades the tackle of 92 for the Pirates and eventually tackled by number 36 Craig Freeman for the Pirates, forced out of bounds on the Razorbacks 40 yard line. 28 seconds to go in this first half with the Razorbacks with the ball first and 10 on their own 40. 
Falls back, looking for their receivers, but sacked by the Pirates. Number 55, Scott Grease, and penalty on the play. So after an unsportsmanlike penalty against the Pirates, first and ten for the Razorbacks. Pitch out to Dart, and nearly caught by number three, Jimmy McCullum for the Razorbacks, but broken up by Jesse Annalis, number 81, Paul Dalton for the Pirates. Incomplete pass, bringing up second down and ten for the Razorbacks. So a little time on the clock, the Razorbacks looking to pass to the receiver. Incomplete. Time on the clock for the Razorbacks, third and ten on their own 40-yard line. Back to Dart again, in at quarterback, blocked. Tipped down by number 52, Andrew Brady by the Pirates. So there was no play left in that half, and that leave the score at half time. The Pine River Pirates 16 against the Bayside Razorbacks 8. All the latest news, current events and points for discussion, it's all on That's Living, 6.30, Monday to Thursday. You'll meet the famous, keep up to date with the movies, the performing and visual arts, plus sport and community announcements. We'll keep you in touch with what's happening in your city. Information, news, plus up to date weather. That's Living, all about you. That's Living is your 6.30 alternative, Monday to Thursday, plus our entertainment show, 10 to 8 each Friday. That's Living, the 6.30 alternative, here on <laughs> 31. Yeah, it's back to nature at all ABC shops and ABC centres across Australia. Choose from a wide range of ABC videos and explore the rugged beauty of our magnificent landscapes. Capture the diversity of our unique wildlife and the sights and sounds of this remarkable continent. Get back to nature all this month with a range of ABC videos and other products from ABC shops and ABC centres throughout Australia. OK, it's half-time in the senior game, the Pirates, Pirates surprising leaders over the Bayside Razorbacks to the tune of 16-8. Uh, to 8. Very different uh, story to what I thought it would be. The Razorbacks really lacking a fair bit of discipline. They're arguing amongst themselves and it's really showing. Pine River Pirates are um, playing very, very well. They're playing together as a unit and it really shows. We'll have to see what happens in the second half, but before we do that, uh, a quick word from our sponsors. Coke. 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 Bottle. It's cool. Coke School Bottle. It's old, lash. Cool. What's old? It's a classic. It's different. It's different. Bigger. 500 mil. It's perfectly symmetrical. Seriously cool. P.E.P. Unbreakable. <laughs> you can fall to your hand. This is it. It looks like my next girlfriend. A modern classic. It's about the shape. The shape. Yeah, the shape. The future. Have a Coke. In a bottle. It's beautiful. It's most importantly. It holds the drink. <laughs> Off in the second half. Number 50, Barry James, back for the Razorbacks. Number 3, Jimmy McCullum and Brian Clark. Number 31, short kick, picked up by number 21 by the Razorbacks. Gain of five yards. Tackled by number 7, David Gorton. Razorbacks. First and ten on their own 45. Roll out by the quarterback, Craig Falls. Pass over the top, but no reception. Second and ten for the Razorbacks. Single back. Hand off to Clark. Reverse to number three, Jimmy McCollum. And he will make yards. Big blockers there. Breaks through. Tackled by number 15. Flag on the play. Good. We had a five yard tack down at the end of the run, a face mask by the Pirates. They're now first and ten, roll out by the quarterback, caught by number 85. Ian Westaway, stopped by 81, Paul Dalton again in defence. 
Razorback second and six with the lone back again. Hand off to Clark up the middle. And stopped by number 52, Andrew Brady. Third and five for the Razorbacks. With a slot back. Falls a quarterback. Fakes the running back. McCallum passes over the top. Connects with Brendan Wiley. And he will make the first down. First and ten for the Razorbacks. Falls looking. Hands off to McCallum. And smothered by the Pirates. Number seven, David Gorton. Loss of five yards by the Razorbacks. Stalling their drive temporarily, perhaps. Falls back at quarterback, looking for receivers. Out to 24, but intercepted by Jesse Annalis. The ball is fumbled. Out of bounds. We'll see what the end of the play happens. The result of the play was after the intercept by the Pirates. A fumble by the Pirates ending up in the hands of the Razorbacks. So they have the ball first and ten. Long pass by the quarterback falls. But no one home for the Razorbacks. Still second and ten here for the Razorbacks. Slot back. Penalties down. False start, I'd say. The result of the play was an offside by the defense by contact. Stops the play automatically. Results in a five-yard gain. To the Razorbacks, second and five, roll out by the quarterback, Falls, looking for his receiver, 85, Westerway picks it up, makes the first down, still in bounds. First and goal for the Razorbacks on a very strong drive. They've moved the ball some 60 yards to get downfield. Falls in at quarterback with McCollum, the receiver, in motion. Snaps the ball, fakes to Clark in the running back and passes. We'll see the result of that play. Signaled incomplete by the touch judges. So incomplete ruled by the officials. I knew I'd get it right in a minute. Brings up second and goal for the Razorbacks. Hand off to Trevor Dart, number 22. Strong drive up the middle. And he is in for a touchdown. So the Razorbacks are setting up for the two-point play. Falls in at quarterback. Three backs in play. Hand off to Dart. He is... Over, touchdown to the Razorbacks. That will equal the scores at 16 all. Tim Bates, number two, to kick off for the Razorbacks after their successful two-point conversion. Number 13, Mark Daly, collects the ball for the Pirates. Cut down by the Razorbacks. First and ten for the Pirates with Jesse Annalis in quarterback looking to strike back after that Razorbacks score. Pitches back to number 22, Mark Salau, and small gain up the middle. Pirates back at second and ten. Hand out to Mark Salau down the side. Big gain and he could be away. Covering tackle by Trevor Dart and he collects him along with number 17, Sean Spinks to bring up a big gain to the Pine River Pirates. So after a big gain by the Pirates, they're first and ten in the Razorbacks 30, hand off to number 88, 80, James Farsi. Pirates, the kick unsuccessful, leaving the score 16 all. The Razorbacks taking up the ball first and 10 on their own 20. Three backs in for the Razorbacks with Craig Falls at quarterback. Snap back. Hands off to Jimmy McCollum, number three. Beautiful stepping. He'll make ten and more. So after a pickup by their running back, first and ten for the Razorbacks. Again off to McCollum, number three. Stopped by number 81, Paul Dalton. Good defense. Second and five for the Razorbacks. Again, three backs in their formation. Flag on the play. Roll out by their quarterback. Falls. And tackled by number one, Mapu Tapalati. Looks like he was going to get away there, but stopped. So there's no flag. The Razorbacks picked up the first down and a first and ten on their own 49. Pass back to McCullum, making big yardage in his third quarter for the Razorbacks. Still dancing around the sideline. Put down by the Pirates. Number 66, Peter Flannery. Second and five for the Razorbacks. 
falls back, hands off to McCullum again. Cuts to the right, away from the defence. He'll make first down, forced out of bounds. Razorbacks, they're now first and 20. Hand off to Jeremy Bates, 92. Put down by 85. 81, cutting underneath Paul Dalton and John Young in assistance for the Pirates. So that was the end of the third quarter. Now into the fourth and last quarter. Second and 11, or second and 18, sorry, for the Razorbacks. Carried by number 92, Jeremy Bates, and tackled by number 7, David Gorton, on the Pirates. Third and 11 for the Razorbacks. Three backs in formation. Fake to the backs. Kept by the quarterback, Craig Falls. Passes to 85, Ian Westaway. Successful completion. The Razorbacks pick up the first down, first and 10. The 23-yard line of the Pirates. Hand off to Bates again, up the middle. He'll make five yards. Pickle play. Falls in at quarterback. Pitch out to Trevor Dart, number 22. Blocked around. Now looking to pass, running back the other way. He's going to be tackled by 81, Paul Dalton. So we had a sack on number 22, Trevor Dart, but there was a penalty against the Pirates. Illegal use of the helmet, bringing up first and 10 for the Razorbacks. Hand off to the running back and small gain up the middle. Pick up a four by Jimmy McCollum, the running back for the Razorbacks. Falls, rolls out to the left. He's got plenty of space, passing to the receiver, and that's a touchdown caught by number 24, Brendan Wiley for the Razorbacks. Razorbacks electing not to kick, but will look for the two-point conversion. Falls in at quarterback. Hands off to McCollum, number three. Swamped by 45, Jody Wall. Great defense by the Pirates. Razorbacks. Taken by number four, Jesse Annalis. Sorry, nine, Maka Mauau. And into out of bounds. The Pirates with the ball after a 15-yard late hit penalty. They're first and 10. Hand off to number 22, Mark Silau. Around the outside, stopped by 21, sorry, 51, Paul Bolton from the Razorbacks. Gain on the play by the Pirates. They're second and 10. Annalis with the ball, looking for his receiver. Caught and hammered again by Paul Bolton. Reception by 35, Michael Anderson. Pickup of six for the Pirates, leaving him third and four. Nalis pitching back to Mark Silau. Out to the outside and forced out of bounds by Brian Clark from the Razorbacks. Fourth and one for the Pirates in a critical play in this drive in the fourth quarter. Pitch back to Mark Silau. Will he make it on the outside? I'd say he has before being forced out of bounds by number 24, Brendan Wiley. Important gain to the Pirates there by their running back, Mark Silau, bringing up first and 10 on their own 40. Held by their quarterback, Annalis, running through, making a gain of four yards before being tackled by number 50, Lorne Fugar. So we had an injury to number 56 for the Pirates, John Summers. Second and four for the Pirates, up the middle, and this will be close to a first down. So pickup of uh, five there for the Pirates, bringing up first and ten. Annalis keeping the ball, looking for his receiver, looking long to number seven. Taken short by receiver 13, Mark Daly. Tackled by Brian Clark, 31, and that's a pickup of ten. First and ten to the Pirates again. Split back formation, hand off to Mark Sula, number 22. Dancing through this defense. Looks like he'll pick up the first down. It'll be close. Tackled by Paul Knight, number seven for the Razorbacks. So the Pirates drive continues with the pickup of first and 10 on the Razorbacks 20 yard line. Annalis with the ball, the quarterback looking to throw, being pressured by number 50. Good block, 92, keeps the ball and picks up first down. So the Pirates were actually short of first down, bringing up second and one. There was no flag on the play. Annalis pitch back, 
to number 22, Mark Sillow. He'll cut up. Oh, fumbled the ball. Recovered by Jeremy Bates, number 92. And this could be a Razorbacks ball. So it was a fumble by the Pirates, picked up by 92, Jeremy Bates. The Razorbacks take the ball first and 10 on their own five-yard line. Hand off to running back. Looks like McCullum. Second and 10 for the Razorbacks. Falls in at quarterback, hands off to McCullum. Safe play, keeping it on the ground to get away from their end zone. Flag in the play, forced out of bounds. Delay a game penalty against the Razorbacks. Costly at this end of the field. Hand off to number three, Jimmy McCullum passes to get out of his end zone. Reception by number seven, Paul Knight. Tackled by 36, Craig Freeman, 81, Paul Dalton. And that's first and 10 for the Razorbacks. After a gutsy play by the Razorbacks. They were gone for all money. First and 10. Result of the play. So the result of the play for the Razorbacks was a fumble and recovered, leaving them second and 15. Loss of five. Hand off to Jimmy McCullum, number three for the Razorbacks. Turns it upfield. Still dancing around the sideline and put down by number 52. Andrew Brady for the Pirates. Good gain on the play. It's remaining in the game. Razorbacks, the quarterback falls, rolls out. Tackled by 52, but slips the tackle. Rolling around to the left now. Taken downfield by the Pirates. Razorbacks were short of first down, bringing them fourth and three. Critical play, and they're going for it. The falls in at quarterback. Fakes the handoff, rolling out to the right. Looking for Ian Westaway, caught before being forced out of bounds by number 36, Craig Freeman, and he has made the first down. Razorbacks, third and six. Hand off to McCallum. Looking to the sideline. He forced out of bounds by number four, Jesse Arnales, after he picked up the first down. Big play with little time remaining in this game. So after Goodyear's to the sideline by McCullum, brings up first and 10 by the Razorbacks, and they're going to down the ball. And that's the end of the game. So at the end of the game, sees the Razorbacks running out winners, 22, closely fought by the Pine River Pirates, 16. Now we're joined by two of the players from the Pine River Pirates with a big effect on the game. Jesse Annalis, number four, the quarterback, and their running back, number 22, Mark Silao, uh, with a score at 22-16 uh, to 16 at the end of the game. Half-time, uh, we had 16-8 uh, up to the Pirates. Jesse, um, well, I thought you were going to go on with it there in the uh, second half, but uh, couldn't quite connect. What was the story? Uh, we had a really good first half. We were running the ball pretty well. Uh, I didn't feel we could have been stopped in the first half. <coughs> we got in the end zone pretty easily. Uh, come the second half, we just kind of had a couple mistakes, and I felt, you know, the Razorbacks did really well defensively. They came up and did what they needed to do. We had a couple of mistakes, just kind of hurt ourselves. Jesse, one of the things that I noticed in the first half in particular, um, there wasn't so much a difference between the teams in terms of um, execution, or the way the game was played. I mean, I thought both teams seemed to play pretty well, considering where you're sitting on the ladder. Both teams were very, very competitive. Very even. Very even. Um, but the thing that I noticed, and it showed, I mean, there's no doubt. I mean, 16-8, yeah. I mean, reflected, I think, the way the teams were going. Uh, but the second half, I mean, as you say, you had a few problems. But what struck me is that, I mean, the problems that you were having were things like late hits, face masks, lapses, lapses of discipline. And you really didn't start, in the third quarter in particular, and you didn't really seem to get a roll on until late in the fourth quarter. I mean, how much did those sorts of penalties hurt you? Yeah, that, that hurts a lot. I think a lot of our guys... Um, you know, actually not a lot of the guys have been showing up to train and some of the guys are still not really familiar with, you know, they got to play within the whistle. A lot of guys are doing a lot of hits after, you know, after the whistle's blown and <clears throat> that's been hurting us. You know, we've been hurting ourselves and guys need to know that they need to lay off at certain times. Yeah, that, that lack of discipline, you'd find you'd get the first down and then uh, you'd be driven back 15 and uh, have to do it all again. Very costly. Yeah, that was pretty tough. Uh, I think I'd like to really see how many penalties we had because, uh, I saw the yellow flag out there quite a bit today. Too much. <laughs> Mark, one of the things that, that uh, I noticed particularly um, 
when things got tough, I mean, the ball seemed to come to you a lot, and you were down on the ground, grinding away quite happily, being very, very effective. Were you generally happy with the way you played? Yeah, basically, yeah, but uh, you know, that's how I usually play. But um, it just, if the block is there, you just move where the block is going, you move left or right. Um, but in all, you know, it's, it's the, the better team won on that back. And like you can see, uh, you know, the refs are looking at I'm not too sure about the refs. And yeah. and one thing has to be pretty heartbreaking. I mean, end of the fourth quarter, tremendous drive all the way from the other end of the field. <coughs> the ball comes to you, you're a couple of yards out of the goal line, and the ball is stripped. I know this is a terrible question to ask, but what goes through your mind at a point like that? Gone. <laughs> and at least it's gone. You know, you're there. You're, like I said, you're, you know, trotting all the yards and that, and, and all of a sudden, this, someone tackles you from behind and the ball pops out, and you do feel guilty. You know, you, you let down the team. That mm -hmm. the ball just drops away, and that's you know the other team gets it. So, yeah, you know, it's just one of those things. Just something to work. Ball security, something to work on. Something. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Jesse, just in closing. Um, the way you, you guys came out in the first half, I mean, sure, there were some lapses in the second half, but the way you guys came out in the first half, and particularly, um, you know, the <coughs> plays were well executed. I mean, you were very, very competitive. And I've got to say, it's, it's probably the most entertaining match that I've seen so far this season. Certainly, certainly mixed yeah. it up. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it was tremendous. I mean, that that must be good going into the rest of the season. I mean, that must give you a good feeling. Yeah, it was uh, it was excellent football out there today. Uh, both of us hadn't really won, hadn't won a game up till today. I guess the Razorbacks won today. And you know, my hat goes off to them because they played really well. Um, <clears throat> it was a really good game. I think the way we both played out there today, uh, we can beat any team. You know, they played really well. Uh, I don't see why they haven't had any other victories because they look pretty good. And I think we're bound to win pretty soon. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, good luck for uh, the rest of the season. Thanks, guys. Thanks Thank you. Thank you. So we're now joined by uh, representatives of the winning team the Bayside Razorbacks, we have Glenn Parker, number 62, and their running back import, Jimmy McCullum. Uh, the end score, as we said, uh, 22 points to 16, and they were down at half time. So, uh, Glenn, you must have been happy with that result. Did you expect to, uh, to be able to drive through in the second half there? Well, we thought we had them, uh, to be perfectly honest with you, we just wanted to change our attitude in the second half and cut out talking uh, let's say profoundly to each other and, and get on with playing football in the basics and we definitely come out in the second half with a much more positive attitude I, I think that obviously shows them from the tape but um, yeah we, we thought we could do it if we, if we stuck to the basics and went back to uh, our strongest point which is our running game. Uh, I, it's interesting that, that you would say that and talk particularly about attitude um, and I'm probably going to get um, taken to task over this one by some of the members of the Razorback. Wouldn't be the first time Michael. No, it wouldn't be the first time. <laughs> but the impression, the overall impression I got in the first half, most of your guys came out on the field like somebody had just insulted their mother. They had a big chip on their shoulder, they weren't that interested in playing football, they just wanted to be angry. Um, and it really showed. Again, I mean, you guys played good ball in the first half, it wasn't necessary that anything was lacking, um, you know, in the hits or anything like that, but when something wouldn't quite go your way, as you say, I mean, there was obviously a lot of talking amongst the guys in the team, and that's got to detract from performance. Um, you know, and in the past, the Razorbacks, unfortunately, I think that's hindered them, you know, over the last couple of years. Um, and it was interesting, you know, in, in, at halftime, listening to Brendan Wiley talking to the team, and I know you had a, had a chat to him just before halftime as you were going off the field. I mean, one of the things that he hit on was the fact that the team has got to knuckle down, get everything that didn't concern football out of their minds and go out and play football. And you came out in the second half and did exactly that. Definitely. That's, that's a good thing about having Brendan on board is that... Uh, that he, he has never played for the Razorbacks before, obviously, and uh, he's, a, he's a respected member of the Queensland uh, Gridiron Football League, and you know, when, when he starts talking to people and saying, you know, well, this is what you should be doing, uh, I really believe that uh, they start to think, hey, maybe he's right, because I've been trying to say it to him, and, you know, unfortunately, I've played with him for a long time, and it's very hard to coach when you're a friend. But Brendan's, uh, you know, is like an outsider, so to speak, but now he's part of us, and he's doing a great job in getting their heads back in the game. Yeah. Jimmy, we didn't see too much of you in the first half, but you certainly had uh, a bit of an impact in, in the second half. Was that part of a game plan, um, or is that just the way things worked out? Well, I mean, we kind of tried to keep me shadowed. We don't, we don't want me to be the focus of the offense because there are ten other guys playing. And so you just kind of, kind of, you got to wait your turn. And uh, I'm a wide out, and uh, we weren't having success throwing the ball. And so we figured if we put a bigger guy in that wide out to block, so we'd run the ball. 
and uh, we'll come second and third the play. Now speaking of speaking of throwing the ball, late in the fourth quarter, down in your own end zone. <laughs> um, Halfback option pass, it certainly looked like. Um, very exciting play, very gutsy play. Who called that one? <laughs> Who I know, I know, I know. I called that one. Um, what happened was they were starting to bunch up and I was seeing a lot of eight man front and uh, eight man and three deep. So they were concentrating on not letting me beat them with the run. And uh, the corner was coming up quick. And every time we ran the toss, the corner was stepping up, which left the wide receiver open. And so yeah, it was kind of a crazy call. But I mean, at certain times you can catch someone sleeping. You know, you get a good result. Yeah. yeah. Glenn, the other, the other thing that, that I wanted to comment on was the fact that the Razorbacks did come out in the second half and played good football. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, and I really thought, I mean, watching the other games that, that we've seen in the last couple of weeks, yep. it's surprising me that, mm. that you guys are sitting on the ladder where you are. In fact, both teams, um, mm -hmm. you know, I think played a much higher standard of football than I've seen from some of the, you know, better play size. Certainly um, equal to the game we had uh, last week with the Stingrays and the Bulldogs. Yeah, I mean, Equally it's great close. I mean, a similar sort of question, you know, that, that we asked the guys from the Pirates, but I mean, that must put you in a, in a good position in terms of knowing that you can you can do much better and you can you can beat teams in this competition. Yeah, well, you know what? It's, it's like this. If, it doesn't matter where you stand on the table. You still come out and do the job. And our, our job is, uh, as an offensive lineman or as a running back or wide receiver is to beat the guy in front of you. And uh, if, if it's so much that uh, both teams do that, both do their job and they execute, then yeah, it's going to be a hell of a game of football. And I really thought that was a pretty good game of football. So now we've seen the Bridge 31 games of the week from the junior and senior ranks in the Queensland Gridiron Football League. Uh, the other scores from round seven uh, played yesterday, 30th of September, in the junior ranks. We had the Logan City Bengals up against the Gold Coast Seahawks, the Seahawks at home at Carrara Stadium. And somewhat of an upset win with the Bengals running out winners 18 points to 16. An extremely close game with the Bengals scoring with less than two minutes to go to take the lead. And they went on with the victory 18 to 16. In the other senior games played yesterday at uh, Carrara Field, the Gold Coast Stingrays up against the Centurions. As I said in last week's preview, we have uh, numbers one and two from last year's Sun Bowl. Uh, and expected a very close game and exactly what we got. We had the Centurions running out victors 14 points to the Gold Coast Stingrays 12 uh, in a game which uh, was extremely defensive and uh, with one run back off the kick for the Centurions and an intercept pass run in by the Centurions to, uh, and conversion to bring it up to their 14 points. Uh, the other senior games in the top of the table clash one and two with the Brisbane Bulldogs and the Toowoomba Chargers the Bulldogs running at Victors, 19 points to 7. That was at Mansfield at Wecker Road. And the Steelers, the Brisbane City Steelers, 31 points against the Cougars, 12, and a somewhat disappointing display by the Cougars, looking to force their way back up the pack. The Steelers will hold on to third spot in the program. <laughs> Let's look at the games from round eight for next week. In the junior program, we have the Gold Coast Seahawks up against the Bayside Jets. That's a home game for the Seahawks down at Narang Broadbeach Junior Rugby League Club. And that game will be at four o'clock. In the other junior game, we have the Briz 31 game of the week here at Valley's Rugby League, 11 o'clock on Sunday, October the 8th, between the Logan City Bengals and the Ipswich Rams. Michael, what's happening in the senior ranks? All right. Next week, October 7th, on Saturday, the Centurions are playing the Brisbane Bulldogs, 2.30 p.m. at uh, East Mount Gravatt Junior Rugby League Club. Again, another uh, a clash between you know, two of the top sides, so it should be a good one. I'm not going to call that one. I'm getting myself in trouble doing that. <laughs> okay, Brisbane City Steelers are playing the Toowoomba Chargers at 5.30, um, at, again at the East Mount Gravatt Junior Rugby League Club at Wecker Road at Mansfield. And at Carrara Stadium at 5.30, 
Um, the Gold Coast Stingrays are playing the Bayside Razorbacks. Now, our game of the week on Bruce 31 next week will be the Pine River Pirates playing the Ipswich Cougars. That'll be at 12.30 um, here at Valley's Rugby League, Bogan Street, Albion. And that one's going to be an interesting one. Yeah, I'd think with the way the Pirates played today, uh, they could nearly get up. Well, uh, unfortunately, I mean, the Cougars, after a great start to the season, really haven't been able to put things together the last couple of weeks. Could be a really tight game. OK. So if you can't get to the field, let's see the game. Bruce 31, 5pm, Wednesday night. See you then. Thank you.